How's everybody doing today? Got a lot of stuff to go over. <clears throat> I want to go back to teaching people on this channel a lot as well. I want to show everybody some more things about the economy that's going on. I learned some things today about JP Morgan that <laughs> is absolutely mind blowing. But you know, there's a lot of people, a lot more pressure coming out on these institutions, these these bad actors, these big names, Jamie Dimon selling stocks. So it's going to start getting interesting really soon here guys i do want to show you guys a lot of things we're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff today so i'm just going to wait a minute here let some people jump in hope everyone's having a good day um, a lot of people are asking me do i think that dilution's done on the amc um there's a couple things we can talk about with that real quick before we get into everything else i will i'll go over amc for the first couple of minutes here but i'll let some people jump in hope everyone's having a good day I'll give it a minute here. Give me one second. Let me get all set up. Alrighty. So let's get into AMC quick. You know, AMC's price is rebounding. It's nothing crazy, but we are starting to rebound back towards the $3 mark. Now, it was funny because right away, you know, the narratives forever has been AMC's going to die by the, the little brigade there, the little troll brigade. AMC is going bankrupt. They're going bankrupt. Now they see that AMC, basically, they're no longer, they're never going to go bankrupt. It's not going to happen um, next year. Like I said, I feel like every single quarter next year, we should be profitable. They continuously add new movies that I've shown you over the last couple of weeks. AMC only gets better from here. I do expect a debt restructure announcement in the next couple of weeks here. And from there, you have May. Which in May, again, I believe we could have 800, 900, a billion dollar box office domestically easily. May is going to be when movies start to come back and rebound. This is why I said the price will come back. Again, I believe we'll have a re uh, restructure announcement here very, very, very shortly. We're at 240 million right now. We'll end this quarter, or this quarter here about 400, 410. That's what I figured we'd end around. Um, I thought Civil War would do better than it did. But, you know, <clears throat> that's all right. It, we're still having a good quarter. So I still believe this quarter will end at about 2.2 or Q2. We're going to end at about, yeah, we're going to end at about 2.2 at the box office. And I believe AMC will be able to get profitable. We're not going to be super profitable, but we will be profitable that this next quarter. And going forward from there, I believe we will be. So let's go into, like I said, everybody's asking me what's going on with the price action. So there's a couple of things that could be going on. As we saw before, AMC, the price, they were they were shorting the hell out of the stock. Over the last couple of days, the percentage jumped rapidly. On top of that, you had dilution. So people were wondering why the stock was going down. There was dilution and shorting. Tons of it going on. Now, there's tons of people saying that it's starting to go back up because these guys that shorted, they're not buying. The people that shorted are not buying. They don't care. They have. They say this every time that they're using these shares to cover. No, they're not. AMC's, AMC, I believe at this point, they had that price percentage. So dilution has stopped currently. Do I believe... Do I believe AMC at this point finished their, their completion? They're done. They raised their $250 million? Yes, they possibly could have. Or they could also have had it rebound. You know, it could come back here in a week, go back over $3, and suddenly they could dilute again to, to finish it off. So I'm not going to sit there and say, you know, I believe dilution is 100% done. I believe it is done for now. I believe they'll let the stock rebound. So, again, we could drop a little bit. But I believe that we've raised more than enough capital now to go over to those banks and, and sit down at that table like he was talking about. And now he can pay down some of that 2026 debt, refinance it and get it pushed out, hopefully get a better rate. Again, if he does a little convertible notes, some type of thing like that, give him more incentive, he'll get a better rate. And again, it al aligns the lenders and the shareholders and the company to all want the stock price to rise. Now, so again, I believe AMC stock price will recover now. I don't believe you're going to see that 250 now. Back to the narrative, people used to say, oh, now it's going to go bankrupt. It's going to go bankrupt. And now it's switched to AMC is going to get delisted, delisted. No, it's not. AMC's price will recover. So again, just wait till this next May here and wait the next couple of weeks. If you hear uh, that restructure, that will again boost the price. When May comes and we have a billion dollars at the box office, again, that will recover the price. So everybody right now for AMC, everything's going fine. 
Everybody needs to calm down. Again, I know they push it down, but at this point, you've, you've pretty much seen an all-time low at the AMC. I don't see, think you'll ever see those numbers again. Now, let's get into what I actually want to teach everybody. I want to show everybody some things because, you know, I, I, want, I, I went back to keep learning. I want to keep learning, and I want to keep showing you guys because as long as I learn, I want you guys to learn. So let's read about what's happening right now, and I want everybody to get a, a very – Good grasp on everything going on. So the rich get richer thanks to the Fed. So we're going to talk about what happened real quick since the pandemic. And everybody will have a pretty good grasp on the economy, everything going on. And you can go out and make plays based on the knowledge that you'll, you're going to learn here as well. So the rich get richer thanks to the Fed. The rich are getting richer. So as we went over last, you know, two weeks ago, I showed you guys that report that the top 20% have now have now more money than all of us. From all the middle class, all the lower class combined, they now have more than all of us. This was mainly due to the uh, the pandemic. So if we go ahead and keep reading, last week the Fed uh, released a new study. The top 1% in America hit an all-time high of $45 trillion. Now listen to this. That's up $15 trillion or 50% from 2020. So since 2020, that's up 50%. That is because when the pandemic came, as I showed you guys, they printed and they printed and they printed and they printed out six trillion freshly dollars in two years. And then they ended up getting up to what was it like 16 trillion total over the last three or whatever. It's, it, it's ridiculous. Okay. So what did they do? They took that $16 trillion and they pumped it. They don't they don't give it to you and me. And we're going to go over this. I'm going to teach you guys a term. I'm going to show you guys some things. And this will, you know, this, this will be some business stuff that you guys can learn in economy stuff here as well. So they printed the $6 trillion and then they went over. And the first thing they did is they gave it to the banks and they pumped it into Wall Street. You know, next thing you notice over that course of time, stocks gained $10 trillion. Uh, many trillions were poured into bonds, not least government debt, treasuries, boosted by, a, a, once again, the Federal Reserve buying their own shit. Now, one of the things I want to show you guys, it says for even worse, so basically talked about for every $1, or for every $3 in existence for the pandemic, they printed $1 of fresh new money and they gave it to the bankers, okay? Now, one of the things that it talked about is it also went ahead and I told you guys about the reserve requirements, okay? I told you guys forever. The reserve requirements went to zero. This was a crime against all of us. The minute the bank reserves went to zero percent, I told you these guys can go ahead and lend out every single penny. They can lend out everything at their deposits. They don't have those deposits. And this is why I got blocked by ISTA today. Because when you point out facts, these banks don't have any of this shit. These banks don't have enough assets to cover their deposits. They don't have enough to, to, for these bank runs. And that's one of the reasons why they need to keep coming up with things, to print more money, all of this stuff. It, it's a joke. But one of the things that it ended up doing is when they brought those reserve requirements down to zero because of the pandemic. Well, I'll show you that in a second. Um... Wall Street is now free to lend basically any amount of their greedy little hearts can get their hands on. Because, like I said, every single nothing needed to be backed. Nothing needed to be backed. It, it was a complete joke. Now, if you look at the distribution of wealth because of this, because of the pandemic, here's the chart just to show you guys through a picture. Like I went over a couple a month ago. They have more money and more assets than all of us in wealth combined. All of it. Look at that. Look at this. Look at this chart. And then what they do is they enslave everybody through debt, taxes, and they keep raising it on you and letting the corporations get away with it. So this is why these guys also have more and more and more money, pandemic, taxes, stimuluses. Now, there's a actual term for this. OK, this is called the Cantillion effect. This is why th I'm going to show you guys exactly what because when people say Every time we print the rich get richer, people truly don't understand what that means. And I want you guys to watch this video for about 35 seconds, and then I will go ahead and continue. But watch this video for a second. 
Have you heard of the saying, the rich get richer and the poor get poorer? Nothing explains this better than the Cantillon effect, first observed by 18th century economist Richard Cantillon. When new money enters the system, it doesn't spread out evenly. The closer you are to the source of money creation, the more you stand to gain. For everyone else, money trickles down slowly, often losing value due to inflation. For the entrepreneurial class who are closer to the flow, there's more access to the freshly minted money because the richest people invest in them. The entrepreneurs can then invest and grow their wealth more easily. And for the ultra wealthy, they're right next to the money printer, reaping the benefits of new money first, investing, lending, and multiplying their fortunes before inflation diminishes the dollar's value. So what this is talking about is exactly what I went over. When the pandemic came, all this new money was printed. They gave you guys fourteen, you know, fourteen hundred dollars. Here's one month in rent. But all of this new money went to the banks. All that brand new money. Guess where it went? It went to the banks first. It went to all the people closest to the printer. It went to the, you know, to bail out all these institutions. Well, what did all those guys do? They instantly took that freshly printed money because they got it before me and you. They're closer to the money. They get it first. So pandemic comes, they get all the money, they get it all first, and then it trickles down into the economy. So what do they do? They give it to the banks, the banks buy all the assets, they buy everything up, prices skyrocket, okay? By the time the money trickles down to you, prices have already skyrocketed, inflation's already hit. The amount, the amount that, you know, by the time you get that money, that $1,400, it's already been devalued by them, over and over and over again before you get that $1,400. But they like, make it seem to you like, hey, this is a great thing. You're getting this $1,400. Oh, you're getting this $1,400 while we're getting millions and millions and millions and millions. And we're able to buy the commodities. We're able to buy the assets before you're able to get them. And one of the you know strongest you know cases to show this as an example, 80% of stocks held by Americans are held by those that are over the age now of 55. This is up from 60% two decades ago and is an all-time high record. So, you guys, again, they instantly print it. It gives it to these people. Now look at the new supply has an arbitrage opportunity. The rich, the super rich, again, buy up everything. And now we're fucked and we're stuck with inflation. Why they have, again, 50% of their assets in three years. They added $15 trillion and they gave you inflation. And then they gave you a $1,400 check, but by the time it really hit your fingers, it was more like a $1,000 check. That is people, because people ask me about this money printer type situation. What do we mean by that? And this is exactly what we mean by that. If you want to learn more about this, I'm not going to continuously go into this. But this, I mean, this breaks, this article right here, I'm going to go ahead and, and post it up for you guys, but this breaks this down completely. But by learning this, again, you can now teach other people. You can, this is stuff they teach in economy. Again, now you can show people what the hell's happening. Because, the, the like I said, look at, the second that money printer turned on, it, it, it went to the banks. It didn't go to the people. And again, what did I say? They, they took that money and they invested it in themselves and then they moved everything offshore. None of that money that was printed for the pandemic went back into the country. That is the number one biggest smoke screen that they have on everybody. Everybody thinks that they went and printed all this money and they poured it into the economy. They did not do that. They printed all this money and then they gave it to the bankers. Then they gave them 0% requirements, okay? So now think about this. I took away your requirements to have any, any of your capital on hand, okay? You have no reserve requirements. So you have zero reserve requirements and then I pump you full of money. So now you can spend every single penny that you were just given. You don't have any requirements anymore, okay? So your vault can be basically be down to zero. It, you don't have to have any of it. So now they went and spent everything.
every single penny. Again, pumping it before you could touch it. Again, this, what they do and how they smoke screen you because they make you think, well, we printed six trillion and we probably put a trillion or two. No, you didn't. You didn't put a trillion or two back into the economy. They didn't. They went out and did some PVP loans that were abused and it was, it wasn't a trillion dollars worth of PVP loan or PPP loans. It wasn't enough to where they were saving the housing market. No, they were just scooping everything up while you were losing all your money. They they printed themselves out trillions and bought everything. And then gave you inflation. And then people go, where's inflation coming from? And this is why I tell you guys, inflation's not going. The feds aren't cutting rates. Not this year. They're not cutting rates next year. Unless there's drastic changes and they're not the stealing everything is going the same exact way which is causing inflation all the way down because they're still freshly printing money they're giving it to the banks who are in return doing what why do they give it to the banks oh the reverse repos everybody did not understand about the reverse repos they didn't get what was going on how did it get to two trillion? It got to two trillion dollars because the bankers were printing off a ton of money. It went to all of the bankers. The bankers then in return saw all of these giant rates and took that cash and parked it at the bank or at the feds. The feds now in return take all of that parked money by the trillions that they just printed off themselves. So they printed it off them, they gave it to the banks. The banks then parked it back at the feds in the overnight reverse repo to gain even more leverage and rates by the rates on what they're parking there. The feds then in return take that and park that in overnight index funds. And that's how the feds make money as well. So people that don't understand the, the reverse repo and when the feds were saying it, it's working as intended, it worked as intended because it was able to print money, give to the banks that had no reserve requirements that could put every penny that they just got printed to them back to the Fed. So the Feds were basically printing for themselves. The banks were collecting hard cash. The Feds were collecting on overnight index funds. And $6 trillion got pumped into existence and you got stuck with inflation. This is still happening to this day. You're seeing it now in the reverse repo, but the feds, everybody sits there and says to me, they can print forever. They can print. No, they can't. What they're printing while well, you're seeing it down to the $300 billion mark, that's the feds also giving them this. That's them having little access, access liquidity on hand, and it's money market funds now gaining, gaining money. So I don't think it'll ever go down to zero, but I think it's going to sit there and go around 280, 285, 185. But again, that is what is happening through the reverse repos as well, through this effect. It is how they make money off instantly printed, and it's how the banks make money. It's how the feds make money off the printed money before they give it to you guys, and now it's undervalued. I hope that all makes sense to everybody. I hope you understand the reverse repos as well. Now... One of the things I want people to look at here is if you look at the underwriting reported data from the DTCC this month. This is on new insu uh, new issuance and debt. This is on obligations and bonds, all that. So if you look at the beginning of this year, if you look right now, you know, you got munici uh, municipal bonds, equity. If you look right here at corporate debt, this is what I want you to focus on. Corporate debt, issued corporate debt since the start of 2024 has tripled. Look at this. It is tripled. It was hovering around 129 in billions, and it went all the way up to 300. We're talking trillions of dollars here, you guys. This is insanity how much this jumped. This is a huge spike. One of the things I stress to you guys is we're living off credit cards. But one of the things you guys don't understand is so are they. All of these corporations, debt is just skyrocketing, skyrocketing, skyrocketing.
everybody's hurting. Everybody's now needing to run. And where did I show you where they are? What did I show you guys? The second the banks can no longer lend, they will run to the shadow banks. But the difference between the shadow banks and the difference between JP Morgan, the shadow banks don't have regulations that they need to follow like these bankers do. They're not watched. They don't need the leverage. So what they're doing, and this, this is why I showed you months ago, the IMF is issuing a warning that the, the shadow banking industry is, is growing. It grew by $1.7 trillion in two years. They're running over there in this, this dark credit card at these horrible rates. And they're taking on debt that's not on the books, but, you know, it's on the books, but it's not, you know, like it uh, it's not like an issuance of, of like th these bonds that you're looking at getting. This is a lot. This is a lot different. But the, the the fact of the matter is, is they're going to the shadows to now pay for everything. And now they're going to the shadows not only to pay for everything, they're going to the shadows to try to you know, hey, I can max out. Let me max it out so now I can pay for everything and maybe do some more bets because these fuckers don't learn. This chart right here, the only way this is going to start to go down is when corporations start to default. They're going to continuously take on more debt because everyone's profits will continuously suffer throughout this entire year. Now, one of the things I want people to look at, this is a huge sign. The price of gold it's going up. It's going up. It's going up. It's a constant increase. It's now holding that value. If you look at bonds, if you look at the demand for bonds, people are selling bonds. They're getting rid of the fiat. They're getting out of this system. People are waking up to what is happening, the collapse. They're seeing this. The United States reputation is plummeted across the world. I know the dollar still got the strength and all of that, but the, the treasury notes worldwide, treasury demand is plummeting. I, I showed you guys last week it went over nine, it went under a nine percent drop. A nine percent drop in one week is a lot. People are looking over, saying you're not this powerhouse economy that you claim to be. Your stock market might be this high, but the rest of the world's waking up to everything over there is inflated. Everything over there is inflated. Demand is going down for your, your your bullshit fiat bonds, and demand is going up for gold and commodities. This is what I've been talking about for years, for the last two years. Look at the price of gold from when I told you guys right away two years ago. Get gold. This is when you get gold. And I told you guys the entire time, don't buy gold stocks. Buy gold. Buy physical gold and watch it skyrocket. Because the economy is heading for a disaster and everybody, oh, they can push this off forever and push this off. No, they can't. They have pushed it off and they've made it worse. They've pushed it off and they've made it worse. They've pushed it off and they've made it worse. Now you're at the point where even Powell's, he doesn't even know what the fuck's going on. The guy's like, we don't know what we're doing. And pretty much you guys, remember when he said to you guys, we're going to seal everything up. Do you remember this? I want you guys to remember two and a half years ago. Powell sealed up all of those documents because he didn't want you to see what they were doing. Do you remember that? And then he said, word for word, you guys can check this out in 13 years because that's when it unlocks. And you guys can make a decision then if we made the right choice or not. 13 years. And this is the problem is all of these guys have these gateways, these, these escape goats to get out of. Think about this with Credit Suisse. What was the first thing that happened with Credit Suisse? They locked the information up. Remember, the guy comes out and he says, I'm locking this in a vault for 50 years. Okay, well, in 50 years, you're all dead. Does anyone give a shit to unlock it at that point? The fact that they locked all the information up on, on, on all of that for 50 years is the biggest scam in the world. And now they're finding out that the entire Swiss economy is going to go under it's it's collapsing because of UBS absorbing Credit Suisse and because nobody truly truly knew 
the real fucking damage because they locked it away in 50 years. And now UBS is fucked. And now UBS is on the brink of any small, small little thing. And they can go under. And they already said that they have more assets and more everything than their entire economy. So if that bank collapses, their entire economy will go under. So good job bailing them out. And on that note, I want to skip something because this is very important. Because as they dump the bodies, and this is what I tell you guys, they go from gray area to gray area. They go from country to country. They go from exchange to exchange that doesn't have the regulations through is the contracts to see the real numbers. So now what are they doing? What are they doing now? Breaking news. Do you guys remember, so the yen's been getting just demolished. The yen's been getting demolished. Well, guess where ISDA decided to have its derivatives meeting? In Tokyo. Crazy, huh? Well, look what happens. The second they have, their, the yen's getting demashed. Okay, now let me ask you this. Okay, think about this. Let's say I'm a, I'm a country, I'm an economy, and I'm on the brink of collapse. And all of a sudden... The entire world economy, the World Bank comes up. All of these guys come up. ISDA comes over. All of these guys. And they come over and they say, we got a way to bail out your economy. If you expand your derivatives market and you let us start throwing some of this stuff over here, we'll start funneling billions and billions and billions and billions in, in, into your economy. Well, now look what happens. So this was announced two days ago. Japan derivative market is set for mass expansion. Tokyo will be the top location for derivative trading in, in this region for the next three to five years now. Okay. And now everyone wants to get involved. Everyone wants to start sending more and more. And everyone wants to start upping their, their derivatives over to here. Crazy. So the second the end's on the brink of collapse, their economy's beyond fucked, and they're buying their own bonds. They can't save themselves. Here comes the, here comes ISDA to come on over to say, can we just bury some bodies over here? We'll pay you a fucking... Well, there's trillions over here. We'll fucking pay you billions and billions. Who cares? It's good for us. So crazy perfect timing as we went over in life. Everything is about timing. Perfect, right in the brink of time, right in the nick of time. But back to what we're going back to. So people are seeing this. They're running to commodities. They're getting away from the from fucking treasuries. Everybody's seeing that. And then what I told you was the problem the United States was going to have was the demand for treasuries is going to keep going down, right? Of course. Just showed you it's going down. Of course it is. What's going to happen? They're going to have to mass rates up. Okay, you got to get that fucking demand. Well, what's the problem here? If the government can't spend, what are they going to do? Well, they have to be able to issue debt. Well, the only way they can issue debt is what? If we start buying it. We're not going to fucking buy it. Why would we buy it? We have no money. You think we have money to... You've destroyed your economy. And now you're going to start to rely on your economy to fund fund your new debt. Are you seeing a problem here, you guys? Oh, you you have a broke economy and you have a government that can't stop spending? So what are you going to so do you guys start to see where I'm getting at? The everybody thinks there's no end game here. Yeah, there is. So now what happens? U.S. debt interest payments reach one trillion, right? So last year it reached a trillion, and now it's going up, up, up. And I've told you guys it's gonna. This is on the old fucking interest, right? And I told you guys eight point two trillion is set to renew. Okay, well that's gonna be at the brand new debt term. That's gonna at the brand new rate term. It's gonna be fucking four point five five. It's gonna be huge. So now you're gonna add six, seven, eight hundred billion. Onto your interest payments on your debt. And then next year, you have even more. You have $9 trillion. You have $17 trillion to be renewed at the new rate in the next two years. You're now going to be paying $2.4, $2.3 trillion, $2.5, trillion in interest payments. That's going to be all of your expenses, all of your other expenses combined. 
it's not sustainable. It's not sustainable. Your deficit is getting hot, hot farther and farther and farther apart. Now, one of the things that, that I want to show you guys, and this is another problem. People sit there, and I'm going to show you exactly. This is how easy Democrats, Republicans, politicians can get you. This is how easy they can get to the other side. So I'm a Democrat right now, and I'm not. And, I, and if you've watched my stream, I don't care about any politician. I don't give a fuck about any side. They're all corrupt. Every fucking one of them. If you're a politician, I absolutely fucking hate you. I despise every fucking thing about you. I don't like any of them. I don't vote. I haven't voted. I haven't voted since I was 18. I've never voted in my life. I never will. There's no fucking point, my ass. Okay. What, what criminal of theirs do I want in? I don't give a fuck. I don't care. I really don't. But this is how easy it is for them to sway people. This is how easy it is. Okay, so if I'm a dem, if you're a rich person, what do you normally vote? You you vote Republican because Republicans get all the fucking, they give rich people tax breaks. They give the corporations tax breaks. That's what they do. Okay, well, if you're a Democrat, how do you reach those people? Well, what you're they're doing it is through the student relief program. Okay, so what you do is you make the student relief program. We're, we're paying off these people's college. Now, me and you, your average Joe, you're thinking to yourself, I qualify. They're helping me out. They're helping us out. They're helping out the middle class, the working class. They're here for us, right? Okay, now ask yourself, how many of your friends do you know that got their student loans forgiven? Okay, now how many of, you, of them do you know that didn't get them forgiven? Okay, now look at this new one. Okay, so if you look at this, and you come down here and you look at this new relief program that, that Biden wants to do, okay? He wants to give he wants to cost us another 84 billion. Okay. And if you look down at this new thing and you break it down, people that are getting most of this relief, look at their average house, their average yearly income. Three hundred and twelve thousand dollars. So this is people in business classes, Wall Street, the people that are the people committing the crimes against you, um, doctors, so that's fine, you know. But people that are already pretty fucking wealthy, that don't really need it as much. But we're all going to pay for it. So it's like having the lower middle class now pay for the people. The majority of it goes to them. Now, this, 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 I follow a lot of business accounts. This guy posted this a couple days ago. And then, of course, Today, or yesterday, sorry, I keep forgetting, it's the 17th now. So yesterday, of course, you know, the York, New York Post posts the same fucking thing. This is going to cost us $559 billion. There's tons of research. There's a tons of people that are doing this model. Universities doing, doing the research. Well, this is what they have it costing us. Okay, and most of this relief goes to people that are around $300,000 a year. People that don't need it. But what does this do? So now you're getting rich people on your side. Hey, I know you don't normally vote for me, but I just gave you relief. I just gave you money. Oh. And on top of it, me and you, the lower class, we get the breadcrumbs. So you might know one or two people that got it, but you, you also probably know 20 that didn't. Because it goes to them. Let's farther them. Like I said, this. you wonder, but then you want these people that you're now making pay for this. Go, you're going, hey, we need you guys to also buy our debt. We need you to buy our, our new issuance of debt. How? We don't have a fucking penny. Do you see where this problem's coming? Do you see why demand across all these countries from, from getting away from our bonds? is is They're like, fuck that. They're going away. Like I said, dropping down to 61% was a big deal. That was, that was a, it was a, like I said, that was a 10% drop. That's a huge deal. People are fucking waking up. People are running to gold and commodities. Fiat currency. Our forefathers said it a long time ago. The second we figure this shit out, we'll be running in the fucking streets. Here is banking currency. If you did not watch the beginning of this video, read this. Watch this video. I highly recommend, if you did not watch the first 15, 20 minutes of this video, watch it. If you don't have AMC, skip the first five minutes. 
and watch from there. You will learn everything that is happening. This is why inflation can never go down. This is why I tell you they cannot cut rates. It, it, it is literally taught in, in economic classes. If this is happening, this is counter. This, there, if for every action, there's a, counter, there's a reaction. There's something that happens. They will never be able to get this under control at this rate. You need a stimulus of some kind to hit your middle class and your lower class again. You cannot have this picture. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? You cannot have this picture. You can't. You cannot have the top 20% of your economy have more than the entire bottom 80%. The top 80 or top 20 percent of our economy has more than the rest of the 80 percent you now officially have your grasshoppers and your ants and like they said in the bugs life the day that the ants figure out they outnumber us one million to one there goes our way of life you have your grasshoppers and you have us and that is it that is what the United States has now become. It is ran by criminals. I'm going to show you some things, and to, and to me, this is mind-fucking-blowing. Are you kidding me type shit? You're like, what? Let's just skip to one thing I want to show you quick, because this, to me, is, is unbelievable. But it shows you why Jamie Dimon has, again, I continuously show you how he throws his pull around, how he throws his weight around. He owns the United States. He owns politicians. He does whatever the fuck this dude wants. Where is it? Here, watch this. This to me is unbelievable. Wait, no, this is... This to, this to me is mind-blowing. I did not know that the custodial for the Fed's mortgage-backed securities, which is total $2.4 trillion in assets was the custodial was J.P. Morgan. So the same people that had fucking rocks in, in bags of nickel and copper in their vaults are the custodials. Now watch how fucked up this gets. In 2008, we saw the mortgage-backed security crisis happen. One of the if not the number one contributor in that was J.P. fucking Morgan Chase. So after they did that, J.P. Morgan Chase got one of the biggest bailouts. As we all know about all this stuff, okay? They did a $29 trillion bailout program to Wall Street. Okay? So after all this happened, okay? The very... The very... Wall Street mega bank that had a corrupted a significant part of the mortgage-backed security market, J.P. Morgan Chase, right after they crushed and did all that, the very first thing the feds did, they made them the custodials for their mortgage-backed securities. What? After this, a couple months after, on September 31st, 2008, after J.P. Morgan crushed and had all that shit going on, the New York Fed signed a contract with J.P. Morgan Chase to be the sole custodian of its securities that it bought under the mortgage-backed securities program that they just fucking bailed them out with. What? So these guys go crush the economy, and then you go, here's $2.4 trillion in assets. You're the custodial of them. <laughs> this is fucking crime, dude. This is why they have so much power. This is why they won't they do anything. J.P. Morgan needs to be disbanded, period. That's it. There's no more. If we're ever going to march on something, this is it. They have funded Jeffrey Epstein's island. They have done so many felony crimes. It's 275 
felony crimes, and they've done them in every single one of every single thing you guys can think of. Now, I want you guys, I'm going to keep reading this because it gets, you're just like, what? So they asked him, so this whole article is about, hey, with Eve, J, J.P. Morgan Chase, just before they asked him, I just showed you guys two months ago, J.P. Morgan Chase just got charged with five felony crimes, but no one got arrested. Okay, so they just got charged with five felony fucking crimes. And then they come up, so they, these guys come up to them and they go, are they still going to be the, are you guys still going to be, you know, their custodial? Do they still have that? Is everything okay? You know, can you guys transfer everything? Would everything be there? Is everything good to go? And two, for the last two times that they've called them, so for over the last eight years, they've called them every four years. And ask the question because that's when the contract will be renewed. This year they won't answer the question. They've always answered the question, but this year they won't answer the question. They won't answer if they're still it or not. So if you look on the vendor contract, J.P. Morgan technically is still the, their their custodial, but everybody's going. You guys just got deemed with fucking five felony crimes. You're now under investigation still for two more. You guys had two felony crimes charged for you when you guys made them to custodial in, or in 2008. In 2014, when you guys renewed the contracts, they got even more felony crimes charged for them. And one was for the Bernie Madoff fucking Ponzi scheme, which they paid $1.7 billion. So right after they went ahead and did that con, right after they paid that, you renewed their contract again. And since then, it's just felony crime, felony crime, felony crime, felony crime, uh, felony crime, felony crimes, still more felony crimes, more felony crimes, felony crimes. Um, more felony crimes, more felony crimes, more felony crimes, um, more felony crimes. Um, this is more felony crimes. Um, in the fourth quarter, so apparently, you know, it's going down, 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 but they're, go ahead and they're receiving 2.5 trillion. Like I said, fuck these dudes, dude. So they went ahead and destroyed it. We made them the custodial. Now they're making trillion. They're making just hand and foot fucking hand and foot holding holding the securities that they bailed them out with with the mortgage backed security crisis in two thousand eight bailout. So they bailed them out, gave them all the assets, and now they're just paying them cash to fucking hold them. And who knows what's even going on? I bet half of these assets have been fucking demolished, probably rehypothecate. Who knows what? That's what's scary. You have a Federal Reserve with the custodial, so you're supposed to hold all this shit, and the, the person that's supposed to hold all this shit is a corrupt person. It's just like when you have the FTX fi FTS fiasco. Well, what happened with the custodial? Well, the custodial never actually went and bought the stock. Well, okay. Did, did J.P. Morgan, are, are the houses still there? Who knows what's going on? Are they made of rocks? Are they rocks? Are they bags of rocks that are marked nickel? Who knows? This is my point. Why are we handing the peop the most toxic pieces of shit 2.4 trillion of the Fed's assets after you collapsed it and we printed out that money to give you those 2.4 trillion? Like, fuck off, dude. Just a complete joke. Now, this is treasonous. This is ridiculous. This is something that we should be marching in the streets over. This is something that is beyond ridiculous. This is something that is the end of the United States type shit. This is something that is fucking beyond a joke. And this is what the United States is going to have to resort to. And this is why you will have mega banks that will run the country and have more power than they do now while the rest of them collapse. Now, I want you guys to listen. This is the most important thing of this entire fucking video. This is whatever you're doing. Stop. For the next five minutes, let's drive in, do your thing. But just listen to this. Okay. Now, back to what I showed you, okay? Now, you guys are seeing demand for our bonds is dropping. It's plummeting. Why people are running to gold. They're running to hard assets. What the United States needs now is their public to buy it. Well, I just showed you that they're broke. We can't buy it. So what are they going to have to resort to? 
this is the scariest fucking thing. And it and it and it we it has something has to stop this shit. Is the is the right now. And we're gonna get into ISDA here hard. ISDA is sending to the Federal Reserve, Federal Deposit, the Comptroller. What they want to do is they want to make banks that facilitate here, listen, to, faci- to facilitate participation in banks in the US Treasury markets. So what they're looking at doing is going, okay, well, we'll have to have the banks buy it then. If the people can't buy it, somebody has to fund our spending. We'll let the banks get involved. Now listen to this. So they'll have the banks get involved. Now the banks listen. Now listen, listen to this right here. So after they get the banks to 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 make sure to incentivize them to participate in treasury markets, the U.S. Treasury and Security Transaction for Clients, the agency should revise SLR to permanently exclude on balance sheet. U.S. Treasuries from total leverage exposure. This is already temporary exclusion for U.S. Treasuries that was implemented in 2020 because of COVID. So once again, they want banks to start to be able to get Treasuries and Treasuries and Treasuries and not use them, use any type of exposure, but they'll be able to use... What they gain on the rates, I bet, I guarantee you, is prop. Well, they'll mark it as profits, as other profits of some kind. But they don't want any exposure. So then, what they'll have is the banks start buying fucking treasuries to fund for the government with zero exposure. Jesus Christ! This is insanity. Now listen. To this, in plain English, the ISDA is recommending a permanent structure, as I just told you. ISDA is recommending to permanently, ISDA is recommending a permanent structure for the bank to perpetually fund U.S. Treasury uh, issuances and the U.S. deficit. They did this exact same thing in response to COVID in order to allow banks to buy treasuries in unlimited quantities. It is an emergency measure that was implemented when the U.S. Treasury market became illiquid in March of 2020. Now, does everything I just said to you start to make sense? I told you foreign demand is going down. It's becoming more illiquid. Guess what else is? We can't buy it. Corporations are running out of money. Who is buying your treasuries? No one. So now what you're going to do is allow banks to buy unlimited quantities, just like it did in the emergency measure in March 2020. This is a huge deal because it basically amounts to quantitative quantitative easing infinity. The banks would have unlimited ability to purchase treasury debt, complete debt monetization, Banana Republic style. Now, this has not been approved, but ISDA is controlled and owned by the same banks who are doing this. Now, again, what this means, there will be zero exposure and all profits. And they can buy unlimited amounts. They can just go ahead and mark what they're gaining, making off those treasury notes, but they won't mark their exposure to said notes. So this will give them unlimited leverage to never need to cover positionings. This is the most in fucking insane thing I have ever seen in my entire life. 
Now, if you look at ISDA, now this is what I want to express to everybody right now. And I, I, I tweeted this too. I tweeted this and then they banned me. I can no longer look at ISDA. I, they blocked me because they're fucking tool bags. All I said. So today. All right. So today, ISDA comes out. I don't know who's on their fucking Twitter today. And he's bitching. And he's whining up a fucking storm. I'm talking whining up a fucking storm. This is guy is whining and whining and whining and posting and whining some fucking more and then whining even more and going on and on about how the how the end game rules are unfair that we don't i'm like what what banker got a hold of your twitter account like what is going on here so he's fucking whining and he's whining. The US based three endgame rules, it will result in 80% increase to cost of clearing. Um, it, this is at a time when firms are talking about already having liquidity risks. Oh, because they're all over leveraged and pieces of shit stealing? Oh, oh. We've switched from Carter counter pony credit risk to a liquidity risks. This is based on N3 rules, and it's not going to help. Oh, you mean, so if somebody isn't, isn't liquid, uh, they don't have liquid, you're, you're not going to fucking go ahead and say, you know what, anyways, we'll go ahead and put it in there. You're not going to say, oh, well, this counterparty has assets that they're not fucking, they're not pledging, they just have them. Oh, you mean your credit support annexes are a fucking joke? Oh, oh, people are waking up to your bullshit? So... In other words, this stops your credit support. Here, you guys. Here's the thing. Phase 6 gave them the tools to stop this. And I was excited as fuck because I go, hey, they have the tools. They can stop it. And I sat there and I go, it's the World Bank. There's no fucking way they'll let this go. And then you sit there and you look over and you go, well, actually, let's check out who the fuck's on here. <gasps> Number one director, JP fucking Morgan. Um, Citibank, um, Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley, uh, these piece of shit, AM, uh, Royal Bank, of can BYN Mellon, HSBS, you mean criminal, 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 um, let's keep going, Bank of America, you mean criminal, uh, BMP, uh, Preblis, dude, I put how many, how many, I made videos, literal videos about how corrupt this bank is. Oh, you mean criminal uh, Barclays. Now, listen to this, because this is another reason why these guys... Well, I'll come back to that in a minute. Now, nah, we'll switch to it now. So, these bankers, dude, okay? These bankers are sitting here. All their profits are going down. All their shit's going down. And then they sit here. So, City. City Group cut 7,000 people so far. It was 2,000 more than they expected. And I told you guys... Just wait till these fucking commercial real estates start hitting these guys, okay? Look at this. Why did why did Citibank cut 2,000 extra people? Very simple. Park Merced, uh, 1.8 billion debt heads to special services, okay? Now, read this right here. So there's a building, and it was backed by a $1.8 billion loan. Well, guess what? 1.5 billion of that was from Barclays and City. Oh, sucks to suck, you fucking losers. So Barclays and City are going to take a massive hit because this is $1.8 billion. That's a massive, look at that complex. That's a massive complex. Well, there's $1.8 billion. Um, let's go over here. Let's talk about this one. Here's another one that was 300 or 130 or was 300 million slashed down to 50. Um a uh, 660 million dollar loan in Los Angeles just defaulted um more office building owners falling behind on payments let's read this real quick the struggling office market is outweighing or is weighing on the finances of banks now and if you look down here the first quarter of Bank of America they had to off charge 350 million more than the previous quarter um 
BNP, the people I just talked about again, they had to upmark theirs uh, 26% up to 923 million that are 90 days late. Oh, so you guys are going to start to have billions and billions and billions. And guess what, guys? There's 929 billion set to renew this year. Um, let's sit here and look like this. So. 17.4 billion of Bank of America, uh, America commercial real estate loans tied to office buildings, making it the second largest category. Oh, that sucks. And guess what? They're all going down. And if you read up here at the top, why does it say this? Because if you look here, most office buildings, the problem is, is in all these offices now, is there's zero cash flow. There's no cash flow at all. Huh. You mean everyone's going out of business, corporations are gone, and nobody has a fucking penny coming in? You mean you can't destroy your entire economy and kill off your middle class and kill off everyone's fucking businesses? Because what else did I tell you guys? If you kill off your middle class and if you kill off your, your lower class, what does that do? It kills supply, which what does that do? Demand doesn't go anywhere, but supply does, so that increases prices, which makes inflation. So, you're killing your middle class, causing inflation by killing off demand. Or, I'm sorry, not demand, killing off supply, because demand doesn't stop because supply goes down. So now you're raising prices by killing your middle class. You have no money coming in on all these buildings. These buildings are collapsing. You have almost a trillion dollars coming due this year. And if you look now... Banks are just now starting to pop them on their fucking... They're just now starting to pop them in. Banks are finally starting to pass uh, commercial real estate losses through income statements. Here we go. Because commercial real estate losses are going to skyrocket into billions, into 15 billion, into 10 billion per bank. 20 billion per bank. Now I'm sitting here looking over and everybody's like, oh my God, you Evergrande, fuck Evergrande. Evergrande had like 20 billion in exposure here in the United States between like 20 banks. Who gives a shit? That's nothing. In the United States, there's like a fucking 929 billion worth of Evergrande's. Evergrande was 20, 20. There's 929 billion. <laughs> and it's not like and it's not like with Evergrande with Evergrande a lot of this too was with the big with a lot of the big banks in the in the United States the 929 billion is in regional banks and a lot of big banks a lot of these big banks are taking huge they're going to take billions and billions and billions and billions in losses as well but a lot of these regional banks don't have them that's why I told you guys get out of those get out of these big banks credit unions when you go into your, you know, local family, family owned banks are, are fine too. And one of the things is, it's like, you guys, if you walk into the bank, don't just say, hey, I want to open an account. Walk up and say, hey, I'm looking to open an account. But I, with the way the economy is, I just want to talk to somebody and, and see how the bank actually makes its money. Do you, are you guys mainly tied to commercial real estate? Are you guys commercially, con you know, home loans around this area, um, auto loans? You know, do you do you guys do you know, just deposit, you know, customer deposits? What, what, how do you guys mainly make your money? And that can tell you instantly. They can tell you that information. And the second they do, you will know the exposure to that bank. Is it very minimum? Is it none at all? It's very simple. If you really need to stay in a bank, that's where you go. You get out of the criminal fucking system because, again, they have 0% requirements on their reserves. Every penny that is at a bank in a deposit box is spent. Yes, of course the banks have fucking money that they can get and have access to and blah, blah, blah if, if you take money out. But in reality, almost all their all their vaults are pretty much fucking – like I said, it, it's a gong show what's going on over there. So one of the things I wanted to show you guys, again, here comes fall. Recent data shows lack of farther progression in inflation. Because why? Did, why? Because of what I just told you. More corporations are dying off, which means what? There's less supply in the economy, which means prices are going to keep going up. You have to get it back to where you can create more, more supply to get that price down. But again, they're still crushing us at, as hard as possible, so... Inflation is not going to get under control. 
Powell says the the Federal Reserve will remain a restrictive stance as long as needed as progression has has stalled. Progression against inflation has completely stalled. No, it's actually gone up, you idiot. It hasn't stalled. It's 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 just gone. There is no progression. You're now in a regression. Inflation's been rising, and I showed you guys that for the last two months. Inflation's going up. They're not going to do anything. They can't cut because it's going up without them cutting. If they cut, you will have hyperinflation within within a year. It'll be insane, and they won't be able to get that back down because, again, you'll have already crushed your economy because all of us are already too broke now. And, again, all of these people are over leveraged. You're not going to cut rates and give them more access to more capital to go spend and get even more over leveraged. It just doesn't make any sense. So again, there will not be any cuts anytime soon for anybody that's hoping on it. Now the IMF, the World Bank, steps up its warning to the US on overspending and it's ballooning debt because it's talking about how again, Demand for treasuries is falling. Everything the U.S. has, if we have a collapse in the United States, the entire world is going to feel it. There's no, they need to get inflation under control. This is the saying, hey, if you guys don't stop, if you guys don't stop, something will have to give. Something will have to give. Or your people are going to, something's going to give eventually. You have to get this under control because the world is now waking up to you enslaving us. You have enslaved your people, period. You have enslaved them through taxes. You've enslaved them through inflation. And you've picked banks over your people. You have picked banks over the entire economy every time. Every politician is a criminal. If you're red, if you're blue, you need to get out of what your parents have taught you. You need to get out of you, what you've learned in school. They don't care. Again, I just proved, I just showed you guys that. Any single Democrat that sat there and was like, oh, dude, they're giving us th th relief. Look, they're giving us relief. It's all, nope, it's actually going to the rich people. It, most of the relief, once again, is going to the rich people. Again, all through the same thing that we just talked about. Sorry, his name is not, it's not Ken, it's Ken Tillian. Sorry, I said his name wrong in the beginning. But once again, I want you guys to look at this. Market capitalization of the largest stocks relative to the 75 percentile is now the highest it's ever been. We haven't reached these levels since the Great Depression. In other words, everything's worth shit. Everything is worth shit. And you have a couple stocks. Basically, all, all the concentration's on, on the same hill, like I told you guys. It's on the same hill. And that hill is full of fool's gold because NVIDIA, all these guys banking on the AI hill. All of those guys, I've shown you, CoreWeave, look at NVIDIA. If you don't, if you haven't, if you're not familiar, all you need to do is just go, go to Google, type in NVIDIA CoreWeave scam. Okay, and that will teach you exactly what NVIDIA is doing. They're doing it with tons of companies, like 30, 40 companies at a time. You got Microsoft. I already showed you what Microsoft was doing. You have all of these companies that are cooking fucking books. They're all cooking books. They're all doing or they're doing what Microsoft's doing with these capital raises and their shell company scam. So it's, it's just a joke. It's just a complete joke, and everything's fabricated. They're all relying on these hills to do what they want them to do, but the problem is, again, unlike the mountains in Highcroft, those, those hills they're sitting on are not full of gold. This will all come down and crash on their fucking heads. They have no... It's, it's done it throughout all of history. Look at throughout history. If you notice every single time there's a large concentration... There's a correction, then there's a large concentration, and then there's a correction, and then there's a large concentration, and there's a huge correction. The correction is coming, guys. History repeats because we never fix the mistakes. We just make them more and more and more and, and, and add new gray areas, a new loophole. Well, eventually, again... You can't hide that from your people. It was fine hiding it from them ten years ago, five years ago, because you you didn't print you didn't print six trillion dollars. The fact that they printed six trillion dollars was the was the reason they cannot hide this anymore. The whole world woke up the day that that happened. 
like I said, if you missed the entire first 10, 15 minutes of, it, of this video, I promise you, you should go back and you will learn a lot. You will learn about everything. Now, one of the things that I thought was, you know, kind of interesting, speaking about politicians and once again, showing you that they don't care. Here's Nancy Pelosi talking to, you know, the board, the government trying to say, if we had more bills passed, if we have more of this passed, well, here we go. She's basically saying, if this doesn't go, I'm just going to tell you. What she basically talks about that we need to not have warrants, that the government shouldn't need to go through all those things to get warrants to do this. They should be able to just go ahead and and just go right at you, surveil you, do whatever they want that they deem necessary without warrants, without anything. And if this was around, they would have stopped 9-11. And that's her big argument. She's talking about, I wish this was just fucking play. I don't know, it's so stupid. Go. The, American the American people. people. So, th so this Biggs Amendment seriously undermines our ability for, to protect the national security, and I urge our colleagues to vote against it. If this, I don't have the time right now, but if members want to know, I'll tell you how we could have been saved from 9-11 if we didn't have to have the additional uh, warrants. With that, I again urge a no vote on Biggs, a yes on the bill and yield back the balance of my time. And a lady. So again, it, it, it's just the same thing. And, and then meanwhile, what's she doing? Oh, crazy. Nancy went out and, and got all Lockheed Martin, 600K Lockheed Martin over this war. And this is why, like I said, war, what did the first thing the politicians do? They all go out and buy defense contracts. They all go out and buy defense stocks. Well, look what happened. Nancy went over, bought defense stocks, bought this. And what do you know? Instantly, Lockheed Martin wins U.S. missile defense contract worth $17 billion shortly after. Well, that was an insider trading. The fact that these fucking politicians have no morals and go, oh, God, I'm going to go profit off war and death. <laughs> Fuck them. Like I said, these guys are just pieces of shit, dude. <laughs> Again, why she wants to take away rights, take away everything. They should just be able to Patriot Act you whenever they want. Yeah, we know. <laughs> Fucking joke, dude. So, back to this. So, again, is this trying to make it to where they can go ahead and and now have, you know, the ability for the banks to continuously buy all the U.S. treasuries, and now the banks will fund the U.S. deficit, and basically the banks would be in 100% control of the United States, and they'd own all the debt. Meanwhile, every time they buy, as it went over, as it states, it would be permanently excluded from the balance sheet, and banks could buy as much as they want. They could technically technically purchase, you know, like I said, unbelievable joke, because they could purchase an infinity amount. Because if the if like he said, if the if the uh if it doesn't go against your balance sheet, but you can use the profits from them, that's in extra income you can always claim. An unlimited amount of income you can claim that is purchasing those new those new bonds. Do you see what I mean? You have an unlimited amount of purchasing power for the United States. So that's exactly what this was going over. Is the block me today? After I told, uh, I mean, literally, you could go read my comment. There's nothing crazy. I'm like, okay, we want the end game rules because we're sick and tired of all of your over leveraged banks, fucking bailing them out when 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 they they do their bad bets he said it's just a fucking joke dude. and then they they block me because they're fucking tools and then look at this with base endgame we are given a great gift to shadow banking so this is this is you guys if we do this we're gonna make more people go to the shadow banks who gives a fuck bitch you're, you're more corrupt than the shadow banks. Why would I give a fuck if... Good. So, so in other words, some, some criminal over there, some shadow bank over there gets it instead of Jamie Dimon who funds Jeffrey Epstein's sex island? You mean J JP Morgan, the guys who have 275 felony crimes, have paid $40 billion in penalties? You mean have done every single thing to the economy, have destroyed the economy, countless lives, retirements, everything? They won't get, they won't get it? Oh, poor fucking Jamie Dimon. The guy needs to get thrown off a cliff. <laughs> I hate that fucking guy. I hate these guys. It's like 
we can do whatever we want, print whatever we want, make our guys sell. Like I said, I, I, I mean, it, this is enough. I mean, what is happening in the United States? What you're taught in school? What the fuck? You know what I mean? Criminals. We're literally letting the mafia run and make rules. And all of us are just like, yeah, we're going along with it. It's fucking mind blowing. It's absolutely fucking mind blowing. Now, a lot of people are talking, continuously criticizing, P you know, J.P. Morgan. They're fucking criminals. The whole world's waking up to how much crime that they constantly fucking do. Stanford, this came out two days. This came out yesterday. Stanford finance professor is making Jamie Dimon very nervous. Again, calling his bank dangerous. Talks about how they're fucking criminals. Talks about all the stuff that they do. By like I said, highly recommend reading this. Her book's called The Banker's New Clothes, What's Wrong with Banks or Banking and What to Do About It. She's going around right now. She's, she has been trying to violently attempt to save the American financial system from corruption influence and disinformation campaigns from men like J.P. Morgan Chase, Jamie Diamond for more than a decade. She's gaining some traction here talking about all sorts of cesspool bullshit going on over there. Like I said, exposing more and more and more criminal stuff. I don't want to keep going hard into Jamie Dimon and how fucked up that bank is. Obviously, you guys know this is the most corrupt. This is the biggest terrorist organization in the world. This I'm going to go ahead and read this or post this URL. I hope you guys read this entire article. This is a very informative article on everything that's going on over there, how they can destroy the country, all the ways that they throw their power around, how they can control politicians, how they control everything. This is everything. This is how they have ties to who. This talks about all the all the known charges, tons of stuff. This is a very, very interesting article. I highly recommend reading that. Now, speaking of the criminal enterprise, look what they're doing now. If any of that was an incentive to get the fuck out of there, J.P. Morgan Chase is now selling financial data of 80 million clients as Trillion Dollar Bank launches media platform. So now that everybody's running out of their banks, they're losing deposits, their, their revenue's going down, their profits are going down, the way that they have to come up with money now is to sell your data. Because what's one way that what's one of the biggest money makers out there is data. If you can farm data, if you can sell data, you can make a ton of money. This is one of the things I wanted Adam Aaron to do. I know a lot of people didn't want him to do that, but I wanted Adam Aaron to kind of farm the data of what type of movie people would see and maybe to give them some targeted ads in, in maybe a list platform things like that, and that could be a huge, huge revenue generator for AMC because. If I go on my A stuff, or my a, my you know my A list and all of that, it's like if I saw you know some ad on there, who cares? It's not gonna bother. It's not gonna bother me, especially you know if it's more like hey this movie and this things like that. So you know harvesting data can be very very profitable. So of course J P Morgan is going to sell all of your data. Now what they're gonna do is they're gonna sell the thing type of things you you buy, and then they're gonna sell your financial data to say hey. This guy's in this category. Don't waste your time spending ad money on this guy. Okay? So this guy doesn't make enough to buy your product anyways. Don't worry about him. Throw it over here. Hey, this guy's rich and he likes this. All of your ads, this is the type of ads that you should target for him because he buys these. So that is what they're going to do. They're going to give them your financial records and then they're going to give them what you purchase and they're going to give you a profile on who you are and what you like. So, again, more corruption, more crime, more bullshit from the banks, and more reason to leave. They will sell your data. Now, one of the things that just came out, U.S. Bank put on notice for alleged debanking of conservatives. So, we find out today, U.S. Bank has been, or I'm sorry, Bank of America, Bank of America has been or 12, 13 congressmen. All these people are going after them now because Bank of America is actually debanking customers off their religious or their political beliefs. You now have 14 Republican colleagues that went after them. I am sorry. <clears throat> so now they're talking about them. They're talking about, the, you know, like I said, the, the discrimination that they're closing down people on. Like I said, guys, this is why these banks are fucked up. Eventually, they can close you down for political beliefs. 
There's no reason to stay in these fucking banks, dude. All they do is criminal practices, criminal practices. There's no bigger criminal than a banker. There's not. They've stolen trillions. Tell me a criminal that's stolen trillions. They've killed how many people because they've stolen their entire life savings and those people committed suicides. How many how many suicides a year from financial ruin because of these people? How, like I said, how many families are lost? Tons of how many like I said these guys don't give a shit. But now Bank of America is having problems because again, now they're doing debanking for people's preferred religion or political views. Like I said, guys, get the fuck out of those. Now, one of the things I want to talk about, Bitcoin. This is the problem with, with once they had their ETFs in and once all this stuff, people would sit there and talk about all these things. And, and, and I told you guys, once they became the custodials, once they did this and that, this is what's going to be the problem. And this is how they're going to steal from you guys. What they're going to do is they have the ETFs and all this. They're going to run prices up. They're going to run prices up. Let everybody in retail come in. And they're going to sell off and sell off towards the tops. And then they're going to just sell off hard and sell off hard. They're going to go ahead now that they have the ability to create. What did I tell you? The second they can control the narrative. Oh, Bitcoin crashed because of the war. No, it didn't. Bitcoin did not crash because of the war. Bitcoin crashed because these guys need liquidity. These guys need collateral because everything, as I've shown you, corporate borrowing's up fucking 300 per, or it, It's tripled. Where the hell is it? Corporate borrowing is tripled. It's tripled into the shadow banking area. So, hold on. Yeah, so now... These guys need, they needed everybody, they needed to run it up, run it up, let Bitcoin retail jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in, jump in, and crash it down. And now what they're doing is they're, they're trading it through the ETF, selling it, doing all this bullshit in the back end. They have all these coins that they can sell through the custodials. They'll rebuy it, they'll let it run up, let it run up, sell at the high prices, sell at the high prices, then they'll rebuy in the supply and re refill in the custodials at lower levels. And they will continuously do this and do this and do this until they can continuously lower the levels in the custodial average. And that is how they will control Bitcoin. And I said that they will do this through their ETFs. And what they will now do is they can control the narrative and they can control the price through these ETFs by buying and selling large quantities to themselves. Uh, it, 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 it's just a fucking gong show, dude. It's the same shit that they do in the stock market. I fucking hate these guys. I, I absolutely fucking hate these guys. They get their, their hands in everything. Now, I, now, this is an insanely important video. And it talks about bankings. Now, this is this was one year ago. Okay? So, this video is not like a brand new video. It is a year old. But I want you guys to listen. It's talking about bank balance. Freezing people's deposits so they can't leave banks. Um, I told people that this would be something that if, if this commercial real estate crisis happens, this is what they'll do. They will freeze your assets. They will freeze your thing and they will try and stop bank runs this way. Now, I want you guys to listen to this video real quick because that is what he talks about this whole fucking time. Should I be, should I be concerned about my bank? I need to know. I completely agree with that. I almost think you'd scare the public if you put this out. Like, why are they telling me this? Should I be concerned about my bank? Like my insurance company doesn't tell me what they're doing with my assets. If they just assume they're going to pay my claim, right? It's, it's, I think you've got to think of the unintended consequences of taking a public that has more full faith and confidence in the banking system than maybe people in this room do. <laughs> so there, there's a select crowd of people that are in the institutional side. And if they want to understand this, they're going to find a way to understand this. There's a bunch of law firms represented in this room. There's a bunch of people that charge them by the hour a lot of money to explain this all to them. And, and, and it's fine. I, I, don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. And they all have huge staffs. But I would be careful about the unintended consequences of starting to blast too much of this out. So this talk, this whole meeting was talking about these balance and these freezing of assets and not telling the public. Don't tell the public. Should we tell the public this might happen or should we not tell the public? And this guy, I don't know if you heard the first thing he said. 
the American public has more confidence in the banking system than everybody in this room, and they all laughed. Um, shouldn't you guys? You guys are you guys are it. Shouldn't you guys have the confidence? So if you don't have confidence, you guys obviously fucking know it's a scam. The, I mean, if that wasn't telling, if this wasn't telling enough to you, and then what did he say? We're not going to tell them. If they want to know badly enough, they can come and pay some financial people to explain it to them. Did you hear that? We're not going to tell them. If they want to know, they can come pay some fucking people to explain it to them. Fuck them. Let them stay in the dark, and the day it happens, we'll just announce asset freezes, and they'll be stuck. Yeah, bail-in, not bail-out. This is bail-ins. We're talking bail-ins, not bail-outs. So, this alone, look at the fuck how creepy this guy is. Look at how stupid he goes. Just keep him stupid. Don't let the public know. Let him, let the fucking few people that want to pay money figure it out, figure it out. Then when they tell everyone else, we'll call them conspiracy theorists. He just said that to you. We'll call them conspiracy theorists. Tell them they're fucking nuts. Don't start a panic. Don't let people do a bank run because people say, why would this need to be in place? Is my money safe? Is it at risk? And that could start it. That's fucking crazy, people. This was in your FDIC fucking banking. This was in your Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation meeting for people that are wondering what this is. What are what am I watching? This is the FDI fucking C meeting. So it's kind of a big deal because they were wondering what to do. You guys remember when fucking the, we were out of money? We need we need all those oh, we need all the big banks to give us more money. We're broke. Well, what are we gonna do if if more happen? We'll just do bail-ins. We'll just fucking freeze everyone's assets. We won't let them leave. We won't let them leave their bank. We'll prevent bank runs by just fucking doing what we do in the stock market. We'll shut the buy button off. We'll shut the we'll shut the fucking withdrawal button off. There'll be no withdrawal button. We'll just shut it off. So guys, this shit's fucking insanity. These guys don't give a fuck and they're letting the world burn in front of them and watching us run around and thinking we don't know what the fuck's happening. Meanwhile, in the housing market, I want you guys to understand how fucked this is because there's so many more assets we haven't even covered about it. Mortgage rates jumped now. Then average year 30 rate is now 7.50%. It's a new high for 2024. U.S. mortgage demand in March fell to its lowest since 1995. Mortgage demand is now 43% below its recent peak and 16% below the post-2000 lows. An average monthly payment on a new mortgage is $2,800 a month. This means the average American would spend 45% of their pre-taxed, pre-taxed income on a new mortgage. On a post-tax basis, it's over 60%. So basically, if you come look down here, we're down to these levels. You're almost down to 1990 levels for mortgage applications, okay? Now, home building is collapsing. New homes have plummeted in March. Uh, construction has begun, has fell close to 15%. Basically, no one's buying, no one's baiting or creating new homes. Why? It's like I told you guys before. I'm in fucking construction. You'll do four or five jobs, but as the jobs come in, you know, you pay your fucking workers as you get paid. As you finish, you finish a job. You know, you'll start, you'll start another one as you're finishing up the other one, and boom, when that gets paid, your guy gets paid, and, and you gotta keep having an income to keep, you know, building new fucking houses. Well. 
what's happening is a guy will start a job, he'll, he'll start a house, maybe another one, but then that first one didn't sell. And he's hoping it sells, hoping it sells, and it's just sitting there. And then he might start that third one. But now his work, you know, he might have had to take money out of his own thing to pay for the first one still. Because he's still waiting for that first one to fucking sell. But he's now, you know, he's getting close to finishing up the second one. Well, he had to pay for that. So now he's sitting there stuck. Like, I'm not going to even make another house. I'm just going to sit here because I have to pay for these other ones still. Because I still have to pay my workers. It, it, it's going to get really fucking ugly here. Now, right now, this is when building permits should skyrocket. You're done with winter. Summer starting back up. This is when new housing be building begins. This is the time of year. Building permit applications for new houses also dropped four percent this month. So building's going way down. Okay. Now this is the other problem. So building is now stopping on new houses. You now have your supply rising. Like I told you guys, supply is going to go up. As you've seen, supply is it's skyrocketing. You're seeing houses for sale now. You're you're probably seeing them all over the place in your town. But what's the problem? You probably have driven by a house and you're like, oh, that's a good looking house. I wonder how much that is. And you go online and it's four or five hundred fucking thousand dollars. No one can afford it. So what is happening? Those are all sitting on the market. The supply is rising. They're just sitting there. Now, all the older houses, if there is any supply that comes out, what happens? Here is your problem. This is why the housing market is not dropping. Let's say there's a house. Okay, let's say there's a townhouse, for an example. There's a townhouse that's on sale for $250,000. Okay? Right now, but right down the street, there's a house and it's on sale for four hundred eighty, five hundred thousand. Tons of people are just going to go, tons of people are going to eventually look at the circumstance or just have a circumstance where they need a house now to go, all right, we'll just go into this townhouse for the 250 because it's half the fucking cost of this other one. Well, the problem is, is everyone else in that exact area is thinking the same thing. So now what's happening? Look at this. What's happening now? Bidding wars are going up higher than ever. On these 30-year mortgages. So you're getting first-time home buyers, And what they're doing is they're bidding up these houses. 30, 40, 50,000 as well. Above ask. So suddenly you're having that $250,000 fucking house. Suddenly sells, still sells for three hundred and ten. Because you have six people wanting it, and they're all bidding each other up and up and up and up, and they're all looking at it, still going, "Well, that three hundred thousand is still cheaper than four five hundred I would pay over there." So if you look at the chart now, you're getting more and more and more people bidding on repeat bids, and they're raising these thirty-year mortgages up. And a lot of people are now realizing rate cuts aren't going anywhere, and they might even hike them. And they're trying to get in at these rates. So now you got bids up. Like I said, it's like houses now. Now what? What a lowered your inventory and your and your average cost and, and everything like that. They're getting bid up. So now if somebody else wants to sell that, sell that, you know, let's say there's another townhouse in that. You know, usually there's a you know four or five little you know complexes in it or whatever in a row with townhouse complexes like that. There'll be like a whole street or two. Now another one comes up. They're looking over going, well, fuck, that one sold for 300 I can at least get 280 And then they bid that up. You see what I mean? So the housing market, it's at like a complete stalemate on, on everything. Because, yes, your supply's up, but nobody can afford what it is. The average cost is still at 406000 your average mortgage is almost 3000 a month. If you have a kid, holy fuck. How are you, uh, uh, just think of how much a kid and a house costs now, period. Just think of those two expenses alone. One of you needs to make like 70 grand just to afford the two things. <laughs> it's a, the United States is, is getting in a horrible position, and the whole world is seeing that. That is why demand's dropping for our debt, because people think our economy is going to crash. 
They know they can wait and they can get map bigger and bigger and bigger rates in a month or two. And they can see if it crashes or, or gets fucked up in the meantime. So they're all like, no, I'll take the more short bet. And they're going to gold and they're going to commodities. So again, building slowing down, housing markets crashing. You have your, your commercial real estate. Well, what's the problem going on now? Well, think about this and look at this, you guys. So now what you have problem wise is you have houses going for 400, 500,000 and, they, and they're not going anywhere. Well, like I showed you with the commercial real estate, you now have buildings going for $1.5 million. You now can go buy a skyscraper for $1 million or you can spend half of that on an average single family house. Think of how insane that is. The average, an average house is 400,000. I just, where is it? I just posted one and he sold it for 1.5 million. And now what you're having in the commercial real estate problem is you're having people seeing that these, these, these buildings are going for 1.5 million now. So what they're doing is they're just walking away from their loan. They're defaulting on their loan of 80, 90, 300 million. And then they're coming up with ways to buy these new buildings at 1.5 million. But they don't care. They defaulted. They went out and bought a new building for 1.5 million and they defaulted on a 300 million loan. They saved themselves the $298 million by defaulting on that old bad loan and coming in and buying up a new one at 1.5. See what I mean? So the commercial real estate sector is actually going to get more and more and more fucked by the second, which is, again, going to add more and more and more. And one of the things that I told you guys was going to start to happen with this, this was the first thing that I said, when we're going to start to see this bomb, this economy crash, everything go down, this is what you're going to start seeing, lending, lending in the U.S. will stall, and it's stalled. Now, with everything I told you in this video, this is going to be the last thing I'm going to go over here, everything I told you in this video, I want you to listen how stupid this sounds, how, how stupid they make you guys try and think you are. Wealth grown stalls at the, the largest U.S. banks, and then when they ask about them, listen to this. The largest U.S. bank lending billions and billions less, or the largest U.S. banks lent billions and billions of dollars less in the first quarter. In a sign that corporate borrowers, this is what they blame it on. Corporate borrowers are paying down debt at interest rates hovering at historic levels. And then it comes down to say, well, all of these corporations have tons of cash on hand and they're all, they're all just paying down debt instead of, of opening it. Well, first of all, think about this. If I have cash on hand, those aren't the people that would have been coming to get to come in to get loans from you in the first fucking place, would they? Why would they? They have cash on hand. They have tons of cash. They don't need to fucking. They have enough to pay off, and they're obviously profitable. And, and why would they need to come to you to go get this? They don't. The people that are coming to you, the problem is, is why you're giving out less loans is the people that normally come to you to get loans to open these corporations, these corporations that are on the brink of this or need this. They're either failed, they don't qualify anymore for your circumstances, so now you have a whole bunch of people coming in for applications, but no one qualifies. That is why your lending stops. So now you're going to have less and less and less needs for banks, and this is what I told you guys. Banks are going to be basically pointless because with the rules, the regulations, and everything piling on them, they're going to give out less and less and less and less lending. You're, well, the people that are going to do more of most of the lending are going to be your local banks and your credit unions, which you're already going to be in. Good job. You're already ahead of the game. But these bigger banks, they're not going to be dealing with all that. So, again, these bigger banks are becoming more and more pointless. They're only here to facilitate evil. They're only here to facilitate bullshit numbers. They're only here to facilitate supply chain financing, su supply corporations with money. That's it. Not you and me, because it's harder and harder and harder and harder and harder and harder to get a house by the second. It's harder and harder and harder and harder for us to get a loan for a business, anything. Personal loans, all of these loans, like the, look at, like you said, look at the sharp decline. It's in the billions and billions and billions. It's not because these companies suddenly have money. 
uh, if these companies had money, why are all why are all their fucking buildings going down? Oh, why are all these why are corporate defaults flying? Oh, it's because they have so much money. Nope. Why did Citigroup have to cut two thousand more people than they expected? Uh, because they have so much money, right? Fucking idiots, dude. That's what I'm saying. These guys are like. Loans stop because companies have too much cash. <laughs> oh, man. Fucking cracks me up. But again, no one qualifies. So again, these guys, people are, you You don't gain any money in, in their in, in interest in the, having deposits in there. You gain 0.02%. Congratulations. You can, you're like, lose, you're literally losing money on inflation. You can go make five times that anywhere else. Good job. You're an idiot just leaving money in the bank. So you no longer can grow a retirement there. You can no longer grow a savings in banks like you used to. So at this point, you, lending from there is going down and down and down. Again, banks are becoming more and more pointless because the system is collapsing on itself. And these bankers are all fucking criminals. Multifamily logged its largest monthly increase in distress in over 18 months. In other words, your commercial real estate, like I said, everybody's just walking away. They're looking over going, I'm going to just take a $300 million loss on this loan. I'll go bankrupt. I'll file for bankruptcy. I'll try something else. I'll start over. I know the people. I got the ins and out, and I'll go start on a new building at $1.5 million. Why do, I hold this, why do I hold this fucking building over here that's, you know, I have to pay $300 million when I can fucking default and give them the building and then go buy a new one at one point five. So... Commercial, like I said, commercial real estate is yeah, it's only starting, guys. It is only starting, and once it starts, it's going to hit these guys so fucking hard. It's not even funny. And why that's all hitting these pieces of shit? AMC will be rebounding at the box office. So again, if you're an AMC stock, let this rebound, and you will be just fine. Um, what was it? I have a, just one or two more things here. I wanted to go over. I think I said one more thing I wanted to go over. Oh, yeah, the last thing, just the last thing. It's not really going over anything. It's just funny. So breaking it down, the Federal Reserve, the, the Federal Reserve, they were talking about the economy and why it's harder for Americans now than it was for your father and your, your, your mom and dad. And this is what it says. It's just that it's the generation in which you were born. It's not just that younger families, well, younger, have had less time to save. It's that larger American or younger Americans today have less wealth than their parents did at a similar age. This is largely, we think, due to the timing or luck of when they were born. So you guys are basically just, you're unlucky. You were just born in a bad period when criminality is running the world and our politicians are criminals and paid off to let them continuously do it. You were just unlucky. You're just unlucky. <laughs> Like I said, gong show, guys. But does anybody have any questions? But I hope you guys learned a lot. We went over a lot of information in this video, a ton of information. I want to get back to going more into teaching you guys things as well. You know, teaching you guys these terms, teaching you guys some you know, economic stuff. That way, again, you guys can play the markets. You don't have to just sit here and just worry about AMC. And, you know, you can make money to put into AMC if you want. Or make money to live off and not worry about having that position as, as bad. You know, like I said, guys, it's all about getting that back. I do know a lot of people. You know, I did get a lot of the DMs on that Coinbase play. That was that was huge, dude. We went up $104 a share. That was sweet. But... I'll see very many questions at all. So thank you guys for listening. Hope everyone has a good day. And I will be live again here very shortly. I had to take a week off. I had to get the room set up and get everything ready for the baby and get all these things. Uh, I had a lot of stuff to do over these last couple days. But I'll get back to streaming two, three times a week here going forward. So thank you guys for listening. Have a good day.